Greetings, everybody. This is Lazarus Moises, and the topic of today's video is key concepts for introducing chaos theory to secondary education. So, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, why uh, we should consider introducing chaos theory to earlier stages of education, and what should we teach, and how should we teach it. Okay, so first of all, regarding, you know, the argument about teaching chaos to earlier education, uh, of course, as you all know, chaos is all around us. Since the 60s, it has been reported in physics, engineering, in biology, economical systems, in chemistry, laser circuits, you know, uh, all around the natural sciences, there have been reports of uh, chaotic systems. Uh, obviously, the argument that can be made here is that pretty much if we look at nature, uh, all systems are inherently chaotic. I mean, I doubt you will find a linear system in nature, right? So chaos is all around us. Uh, and of course, apart from natural systems, uh, as you know, especially in the last 20 years or so, chaos has been considered in many applications, like in random bit generators, in encryption, uh, in watermarking, in communications, optimization, in surveillance, and, you know, there are many applications of chaos uh, being reported in the literature. So overall, we can say, you know, chaos is everywhere. And here, naturally, a question arises, obviously, uh, Okay, if chaos is everywhere, the, everywhere, then why not teach it? Of course, the easy question is, uh, obviously, we cannot teach chaos uh, at very early stages because it's not an elementary topic, obviously. It requires understanding of differential equations of uh, dynamical systems in general. So teaching chaos, obviously, is not something easy, right? Obviously. But here, there is an argument that can be made that uh, since chaos is all around us, even if we don't really understand it, uh, we are really more familiar than we know uh, with chaos, even from an earlier, earlier stage of uh, life, you know. So certain properties of chaotic systems and dynamical systems are so natural since they are appear, you know, all around us, that we can see that they can relatively be explained with, without many technicalities, okay? Uh, so the approach we are considering is potentially, uh, you know, try and teach some and explain some chaotic phenomena through examples, through graphs, through illustrations, right? So why should we do that? What are the potential merits of teaching chaos in earlier education? Well, from my perspective, the greatest uh, merit to be made, of course, is, uh, you know, the unification of uh, natural sciences. I say that because this is very important because, in, you know, in high school we teach mathematics, we teach physics, we teach chemistry, and they are considered set separate subjects. But, you know, chaos appears in all of them. So we can say that chaos theory encompasses all the natural sciences. So teaching a seminar or introducing a seminar on chaos is a great approach of unifying uh, the natural sciences in higher education, okay? And of course, through that, one can say, you know, that we can provide some mathematical support and programming support of the physical courses, if you're a physicist. Uh, obviously, if you're a mathematician, you can make the exact uh, opposite uh, argument the other way around, that you can teach mathematics and provide the physical and book and uh, programming support. Uh, but, you know, either way you look at it, bottom line, if we can try and unify uh, the natural sciences and the teaching of natural sciences uh, through chaos phenomena. And of course, uh, being an adapt, uh, you know, an advanced uh, concept, teaching chaos can provide a great passage, as we can say, uh, from secondary to higher education. So, uh, you know, all of these arguments can be made and what are our, is our place at the moment, you know? How and what to teach uh, for chaos theory? So what I'm trying to do at the moment is potentially create a list of things that we should try and address of the possible phenomena that, you know, relate to chaos and can serve as a background to chaos. Okay, uh, there are many phenomena, of course, that uh, relate to dynamical systems and chaos. So what I'm doing at the moment is to try and put them all uh, in a list, you know, and separate them in introductory concepts, advanced concepts, and then some hands-on topics, right? And for each one of these basic uh, phenomena, I'm trying to provide and create a plethora of examples that any teacher can use uh, to showcase the phenomena to their students. So that's the place where I am at the moment, you know. 
Of course, we should mention that this has great uh, ties with control theory. So there are people in control theory that have been trying to do the exact uh, same thing. And uh, even in dynamical systems and chaos, there is already an existing very active research on introducing chaos theory uh, to earlier stages of education. So this is not by any means a new topic, okay? But what I'm trying to do is trying to outline the important topics in understanding dynamical systems and chaos. So for introductory concepts, okay, of course we should start with introducing and explaining continuous and discrete time to students. The concept of determinism, like being able to reproduce a system again and again and again in case it's deterministic, uh, you know, in contrast to being stochastic, obviously. The concept of causality where, you know, the present uh, depends uh, on the past, very fundamental, of course, and also fundamental concept is time invariance, okay? So to introduce class, we, see, we need to start from introducing very basic uh, concepts in dynamical systems, right? Continuing in dynamical systems and introductory topics, we need to discuss and explain what is a system. And of course, this binds with the topic of dimension, or if you like, the degrees of system, of freedom, I'm sorry, present in a system. The concept of a state space, meaning like if I have an example like the ones I saw you right here with one mass or two masses, what is the state space? You know, what are the states of the system? Very important topic, of course. And now we are building towards more advanced topics, of course, because we need to discuss, after we explain a system, we need to discuss the solution of a system. So we can need to explain the trajectory of a system, like its solution. And of course, one of the most fundamental topics in dynamics, the superposition principle, or if you like, the concept of linearity and possibly memory, okay? If we explain all that, so this is the second part of the introductory topics. Uh, we come to the final important introductory topic, which is the phase portrait. As you know, it's super fundamental in analyzing chaos. Uh, of course, it has to do uh, with considering first and understanding uh, the states of the system and then how we can uh, interplot them uh, to get an understanding of how the system behaves. So for me, this is the final introductory important topic that we need to introduce uh, to students, okay? The phase portrait. If we understand all of this, we can move on to more advanced topics, of course, which are much more difficult. We need to explain non-linearity. And from my perspective, the best way to explain non-linearity in contrast to linear systems uh, is to consider rotational systems like the pendulum uh, or, you know, uh, two, two or one degree of freedom uh, uh, joints and the robotic systems. Of course, this opens up a passage to a great concept, which is stability and equilibrium. Uh, super important in dynamic systems, of course, and in chaos. So uh, the examples that I have here, for example, with uh, robots are great ways uh, to explain both the concept of non-linearity, equilibrium, and stability and instability of equilibrium. Because as you know, in these robotic systems or pendulums, if you like, we have two or more equilibria. Some are stable, some are unstable. So this is a great way of unifying uh, these three phenomena. So we can explain this through these examples. And of course, another more advanced topic is the one of the basin of attraction, which opens up the discussion of coexisting attractors, of course. So this is the first part of the advanced concepts. And the second part of the advanced concepts, of course, uh, is chaos. Now we're getting into the you know, the deep core of the uh, lecture of introducing chaos to students. I would suggest uh, addressing this through discrete time because it is much easier than continuous time. So we can discuss, after we have given the concept of a state and the trajectory, uh, we can discuss periodicity. What better way to do it other than the bifurcation diagram and the logistic map because it has all of the behaviors combined. So we can explain period one, period two, period four, period eight, and then chaos. So we can explain this transition uh, from periodicity to chaos. We can explain the sensitivity to initial conditions. I have it on the bottom here. And we can unify them together in explaining the bifurcation diagram, which is, you know, especially for the logistic map, it also appears, uh, uh, you know, in pop culture. So it's a very well-known graph. Uh, so this is a very nice way of explaining all of these advanced concepts together. <clears throat> I would 
uh, suggest going for discrete time because continuous time, uh, explaining chaos, it's much more difficult. You need to explain Poincaré cuts. So it's a much more difficult concept. But if we are going to address this, not in uh, higher education, but maybe at an early stage of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not secondary education, but if we are going to address it on uh, the early stages of higher education, it is possible to consider continuous time as well. Uh, <clears throat> but it is much more difficult. But we can construct appropriate graphs to explain period one, period two, and chaos, and so on. And of course, <laughs> we can end up with more advanced concepts like coexisting attractors, but of course, these are uh, much more difficult to explain. So this is probably optional. And finally, the third, the third part of a potential seminar has to do with applications. These are more advanced concepts, but I would consider addressing them either on first year students of uh, university or maybe at engineering departments or uh, in secondary education, especially if the teacher teaching it has a background on mechanics and uh, mechanical systems, because, because potentially you can also construct, for example, a pendulum that behaves chaotically. You can consider as another application some chaotic circuit, if this is your background, of course. Uh, you can consider a random bit generator that you can apply, for example, in an Arduino board. This is relatively easy uh, to construct. And if, of course, you want to do something much more advanced, you can consider even chaotic circuits, of course, like chaotic lasers, I'm sorry. But this is a more advanced topic. So my point here is, uh, first of all, as you can see, to underline all of these advanced topics, you know, these are a lot of them, of course, I don't think you can teach all of them in a single seminar. But the good thing is that uh, all of these advanced topics, once you outline them, you can do what? You can fill many, many, many simulations to explain about each concept. And that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. I'm, I'm trying to create a family of numerous applications and simulations that any teacher uh, can download and use for themselves. And if you are to teach a seminar, depending on the class that you choose, you can choose a subset of these uh, principles and uh, illustrate them, uh, you know, not necessarily through theory, but I would more suggest through examples. So if you are going to teach a chaos seminar, but you put an emphasis on discrete time, you can only focus on determinism, the concept of a trajectory, stability, and then transition to chaos. So you don't need to talk about every little uh, principle that I have listed here. Okay, so. At the moment, we have a channel on YouTube. We have constructed it on 2020, and we are at the process of creating numerous illustrations to illustrate and explain chaotic phenomena. So thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you all at the Q&A.